Hi everyone, I'm Michael Gomez from the Oxford Mathematical Institute and welcome to the Mathematical Observer in which we explore the interest in mathematics behind various everyday phenomena. In the previous video we started looking at the unusual behaviour shown by the jumping pop toy. So this is just a spherical cap made from a rubbery material and the idea is I can turn it inside out to create an inverted shape and when I then place the cap down on a surface this inverted shape becomes unstable and suddenly jumps back to the original shape. This explosive motion is called a snap-through instability and in the previous video we looked at why the instability occurs and the important role of geometry. Essentially when you turn a spherical cap inside out you compress and stretch part of the material so that there is stored elastic energy. If the cap is very deep compared to its thickness, like this section of a tennis ball I have here, then this stretching and compression is relatively unimportant so that the inside out state is also stable. It doesn't snap through because there's almost no energy difference between this and the original shape. But crucially, the shallower the cap is compared to its thickness, the more stretching and compression there is, so that the inside out state has a higher energy. If the cap is too shallow, so like this one here, then it always snaps back to the original shape once I place it down. In this video, we're going to explore how fast the popper toy snaps. Now, a simple experiment you can try yourself is to turn a popper toy inside out and place it down a few times in succession. You'll notice that with each attempt, it takes a very different amount of time to snap through, anywhere between a fraction of a second and several seconds. Clearly, there's something strange going on that prevents the popper from doing the same thing every time. In fact, this behavior can arise purely from the nature of the snap-through transition. Now, to explain how, here I've got the same sections of tennis balls I had earlier. So the deeper cap doesn't snap at all, whereas the very shallow cap always snaps through immediately. Whereas this cap here is in a kind of Goldilocks zone between these two extremes. It's not too shallow, it's not too deep. And if I turn this inside out and place it down, then you get a very slow snap through just like a popper toy. There we go. You'll have to believe me that if I were to make this just a little bit deeper, it would no longer snap through at all. And so somehow by just being close to this threshold at which snap through no longer occurs, the cap inherits this slowing down and unpredictability. To explain why this happens, it's useful to think about the energy of the system. To make things more concrete, we can imagine a heavy ball rolling on a hill under gravity, which is meant to represent our popper toy. The motion of the ball represents the snap-through motion, and the various positions at which the ball can be at rest, like this valley on the left here, correspond to the various shapes in which the cap can be in equilibrium. Currently, the landscape has these two valleys. This is analogous to a very deep spherical cap, which can be at rest in either the original shape, which is the valley on the left, and also the inside-out shape, which is the valley on the right. Now we gradually change the landscape so that the right valley increases in height while also becoming shallower. What this does is increase the gravitational energy associated with that state because the ball is higher up there. For the popper toy, the equivalent change would be to decrease the depth of the cap because this increases the elastic energy of the inside out shape compared to the original shape. If we continue to change the landscape in this way, then eventually there's no longer a valley there at all. We've lost the equilibrium. This corresponds to a very shallow spherical cap because if we turn this inside out and release it, this is just like placing the ball next to where the valley was, after which it rapidly snaps and rolls back to the other valley. So this is another way of looking at what causes snap-through, but what does this tell us about how fast snap-through happens? Well, suppose we keep evolving the landscape in the same way we did before, making the shape of the hill much steeper. If we place the ball in this vicinity and release it, we will obviously get a faster snap-through. However, if we go back to just beyond the transition when snap-through started to occur, then the shape of the hill becomes increasingly flat, but crucially, is still slightly sloped downwards. If we now place the ball here and release it, it naturally rolls away very slowly at first back to the remaining valley we get a very slow snap through. This same mechanism is happening with the popper toy. Its geometry, its depth is such that it's just beyond the snap through threshold and so slows down because of this very flat energy landscape. It's also a consequence of this landscape that the total time taken to snap through depends very sensitively on the initial state of the system and so becomes unpredictable. 
To see why, suppose we release two balls in slightly different positions on the landscape. They take very different amount of times to snap back, depending on how much of the flat part of the landscape they travel over before returning to the other valley. Because turning the popper toy inside out by hand is slightly different every time, this introduces small differences in the initial state of the system. This very flat energy landscape then magnifies these differences to cause large variations in the total time taken to snap through. This tendency of systems to slow down and become very sensitive near critical transitions is actually a very general phenomenon. You see it in loads of other areas of physics and is known as critical slowing down. Another interesting feature you might have noticed is that the popper needs to be held for a minimum amount of time to attain any delayed snap through. And this is because the popper is displaying what's called viscoelastic behavior. The material flows like a liquid over very long times so that the forces within the popper relax. So you see the same behavior in memory foam or in silly putty, for example. What this means is that if we hold the popper for only a short amount of time, it's still largely unrelaxed when it's released. The full story is a little complicated, but there's a simple way to think about the effect that this has, which is that it acts as an extra perturbation or kick to the system. So even if we start the popper in that flat part of the energy landscape, it's effectively pushed or kicked away from that region and so snaps through immediately. By holding the popper for longer, the more it's relaxed when it's released, and so the smaller that kick is. Effectively, it starts further into the flat part of the energy landscape, and so the resulting snap through time is larger. So hopefully I've been able to convince you that quite a simple children's toy can show very complicated behavior purely from this interaction between its geometry and the nature of the snap through transition. If you're interested in further details on snap through, critical slowing down or viscoelasticity, then some links to relevant literature that you can access for free should appear on screen and also in the description. But otherwise, thank you for listening. Thank <laughs> you.